Hello, this is Denton Yoder, instructor for BSC 2304, the Biological Systems Engineering CAD class. Uh, this is lesson number two. We're going to talk about the draw commands, the coordinate system, a little bit about zoom, uh, and just some odds and ends uh, on learning AutoCAD. Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about is the coordinate system, the Screen is a piece of graph paper with the X horizontal, Y vertical. These things can be changed, but we're not going to change them in the first week. Okay. If you don't have your coordinates showing at the bottom of the screen, or if you don't have your draw pull down, uh, refer back to lesson one. Okay, the coordinates, X horizontal, Y vertical, the coordinates are shown on the bottom of the screen we can specify any location on the screen by its x comma y location we will ignore z for the first half of the class we'll get into it at the end if anybody wants to or if we have time okay so to start off i'm going to draw a line i'm going to type in l for line i just happen to know that that is the macro uh, i'll explain how to find that in a minute if I type in coordinate, okay, right now my cursor is around 5, 3. So if I type in coordinate 5, 3, enter, that's where the line jumps to. If I want to go straight up 4, I can just add 4 to the 3, and I'm now at 5, 7. If I want to go over 4, that would be 9, 7. If I want to go over 3 and down 1, uh, 9 and 3 gives me 12, comma 6. And then if I want to drop down 3, 12, comma 3, C for close. And I was able to draw a box. Now, to slide over, I'm using a wheel mouse, and the wheel acts like a third button. The default action for a third button or the pushing down the wheel is to hold the screen as a piece of paper and slide it over. Okay, so I'm gonna draw this again. This time I'm not gonna use a specified coordinate. I'm gonna just do L for line, um, enter. I'm gonna start the line and I'm gonna say, I wanna go down three. I don't know where I'm at, so I don't know where I'm going. Uh, on the screen are some toggles. There is a ortho toggle. It's also function key 8. The ortho toggle will lock me into orthogonal lines. So if I drag down and type 3, enter, I get the 3, 7, up 4, over 4, C for close. I drew the same thing without having to know any of the coordinates by typing in the distances. Okay, I'm going to hold the wheel down, slide that over, and I'll draw it again. Now this time, if you notice, I started at the end of the diagonal and finished at the other end. That way I could just do a close. That made it really easy. I'm going to do it again, but this time I'm going to specify distances and angles. Okay, so when I wanted to specify a coordinate as an x comma y, I could just type an x comma y. If I change that and put an at in front of it, the at sign indicates that I want relative to my previous position. So if I start a line, I pick a point, I'm going to turn ortho off so you can see that it's doing it automatically. Now, if I want to go down three, I want to do at zero in the x direction and minus three in the y direction. If I want to go to the left seven, it would be at minus seven in the x, comma zero in the y. If I want to go up four, it'd be at zero in the x, comma four in the y at four comma zero, close. I did it with a relative coordinate. So at means from the point I'm at, 
what is the delta x delta y? So we've learned absolute coordinates. We've learned drawing straight using ortho and just typing the distance. We've learned at a distant at a delta x delta y. Another one is at um, a distance and an angle. To do that, back to the line command again. Uh, pick a spot at three angle 270, at seven angle 180, at four angle 90, at four angle zero, close. So that was also very easy at a distance less than an angle. Angle zero is to the right. Good. Angles go counterclockwise. All these things can be changed, but we're not going to for the, for this year. Okay. Um, that's called polar coordinates. If you added a comma Z, that would be a cylindrical coordinate. If you added a less than Z, which is at distance, angle, horizontal, angle, vertical, um, that would be called spherical coordinates. We're not going to do the cylindrical or the spherical, but hopefully you understand that. Okay, so that's the rough down and dirty on commands. Now, I did the line command by just typing L. I, of course, could have gone up to draw a line, but that was one, two clicks to pick a starting point. Um, I'm going to hit escape. Normally, I just hit L for line. I hit the space bar for enter. And it doesn't like that too much. There it worked. So normally, I'm doing that. Okay, so how did I know that L was line? I'm going to hit escape and get out again. If I do parenthesis, find file, space, and quotes around acad.pgp, it'll tell me that the user, my login name, app data roaming, Autodesk Civil 3D 2018, English support folder has an acad.pgp file. Uh, Lisp is what you're in when you're in the parentheses. The double backslash is there because backslash is a reserved character in Lisp. Okay, if I window Z to pull up Explorer, two things I'm going to need to do is to turn on hidden files, also to turn on file extensions. With both of these visible, I can go to the C drive, Users, Denton, App Data, Local, excuse me, it was App Data Roaming, App Data Roaming, Autodesk, Civil 3D 2018, English Support. And if you did not have extensions, all of these AutoCAD files would look the same. But since we turned on extensions, you can see the PGP. Now you need to open this in like Notepad. I use Notepad++. I like it a lot better. Okay, Notepad++. If I scroll down roughly to line 112, you'll start seeing the macro definitions. In the macro definitions, I'm going to scroll down to L for line, and it says L is line. Okay. All the commands that we're going to be doing, well, the majority of the commands we're going to be doing, have a macro defined for the command. You can type the whole command in, but the macro will work just as well and even faster. Some of the macros, like LA for layer, also have a minus LA. The minus sign is kind of magic. It tells the command, don't pull up a picture menu. Give it to me at the command line. So if I want to freeze every layer, I can type in LA, call up layers, and select every layer I want to freeze. But if I know the minus LA, I can do a freeze and a wildcard asterisk and freeze all the layers in one shot. 
Okay, so all the commands we're going to learn today, I want you to look them up in the PGP and learn their macros. Okay, back to work. Okay, so we've learned how to toggle ortho on and off. We've learned coordinate systems. We basically have learned the line command, but maybe you haven't. I'm going to type L for line again, enter. And in, while I'm drawing the line, I can hit F1 for help. F1 is supposed to give me, if your system's working correctly, context-sensitive help. So the line command help went straight into the line command, tells you how to turn ortho on and off. Uh, was this helpful? Actually, it looks like it went more into the ortho command than the line command. Uh, let me try it again. Uh, a for arc. Pick a start point, pick another point, F1 for help. There, I got the arc command. I like that. So it's telling me about the arc command and how it works. So this is how you are going to learn commands. You can read about them. Also, at the top, there's a find button. The find button will show you where on the menu, on the ribbon menu, the arc command is. So the find command helps you find the file. F1 gives you the help tool. Uh, we should be good to go. Now the arc command, uh, well, we already kind of blew it because I showed you that. Under the arc pull down were a lot of different arc commands. It's really all one command with options. Learning the arc command is going to be a key to understanding how this command line works. When I enter the arc command, my computer says arc, specify start point or start point of the arc or center. So it's saying, I'm expecting you to pick the start point of the arc, but it's an option to hit center. So I'm gonna pick where the start point is. Now I'm, I've started an arc and it says, okay, specify the second point on the arc or you can do center or you can do end. Well, I'm gonna pick a second point on the arc and now it says, specify the end point of the arc. So I was able to operate the arc by hitting three points that define the arc. Technically, the arc is defined by a center point, a radius, and um, a starting and ending angle in radians, but nobody really cares. Uh, what we wanna do is how to know how to draw one. So if I do A for arc again, and I pick a starting point, how do I get to the other choices? If you type the letter that's capitalized, it switches you to that mode. So if I type E, it'll switch me to end of the arc. And then it says, specify the center point, hold down control if you wanna switch directions, A for angle, D for direction, R for radius. I'm gonna do D for direction. So what we specified was starting point and ending point of the arc, and now I can swing the tangency direction anywhere I wanna put it. I love that arc. Okay, now doing something a little different. Let's say I draw a line, enter, enter, click. I can do an arc continuing off of that line. If I do A for arc, it says specify a start point. If I just hit enter, hey, it's coming off tangent to the line I just drew. Well, I wonder if line does that. L for line, if I just press enter, it takes off tangent to the arc I just drew. There was nothing in the command line to let you know that was the case. I need some snaps. Wasn't supposed to talk about that yet, but I need to snap that. Okay. There was nothing in the command line to tell you that. You really need to read the help file to get that. Now, while we're talking arcs, don't fret too much about arcs. You can always draw a circle and trim off 
the piece you don't want to get an arc. But I haven't taught trim yet. Okay. We've done the command line. We've done the coordinate system. We've talked about panning. Double pick the wheel and you get a zoom out to everything or zoom extents. Rolling the wheel and putting the cursor where you want to see and rolling the wheel up zooms. Now there is an entire zoom command, Z for zoom, and it says all center dynamic extents, previous scale, blah, 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 blah. It has a bunch of them. And you can just do two picks, click, click. Don't do a press and drag, just a click, click around the object you want to zoom on. Zoom, enter, extents, enter to get out to a full sheet. I find it easier just to roll the wheel, roll the wheel back out, or double click the wheel. Uh, so I'll suggest you have a wheel mouse to use during class. Um, I think this concludes the, the uh, second video. Um, I'll give you a list of commands that you need to research. We need to try all the commands, see how they work, read the help file on all the commands, see how they're supposed to work, look at the pig pen, the PGP file, and find the macros for all of them. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.